absolutely fucking nuts treating her like a little baby. I didn't need to see that. Sweet Lord. I would be a victim for life. <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard was released from prison on December 28th. And I'm just gonna say it. Some of you guys are being a little weird. I don't know if you were active on like Twitter and TikTok. I like, I don't have a Twitter, but I saw the energy. I saw the tweets. I saw everything getting reposted. The week of December 28th was kind of a weird week. But if you're somebody that was just following the press and the more professional articles, you didn't see all the nonsense that I saw. Everybody heard that she was getting out of jail. And then what happened was we were getting opinions from everyone on the internet that some people that know the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, some people that just saw the act, or some people that didn't know anything and all they heard was, oh my God, she killed her mother. We were getting opinions from all corners of the internet. I felt like a lot of people were infantilizing her and creating this image of this really sweet, innocent girl that knew nothing and, oh, this is what I'm gonna show Gypsy when it, when she gets out. And I know it was like a joke. And I also know that when we try to paint somebody as super innocent online, part of the reason why we do it, I was trying to understand this a little bit, even though I thought it was annoying. Part of the reason why we do it is because sometimes we have shitty people in our lives, we live in shitty hometowns and everything fucking sucks. And we just want one thing one thing that is pure and sweet and innocent that we can like hang on to that's also getting justice so i get it but i just felt like some of the celebratory nature of it and some of the comments were like a little out of touch gypsy just got out of prison but she's not a baby she is a woman that just did eight years in prison I also think Dee Dee Blanchard, part of what she was trying to do was to create an image of a sweet, innocent little girl. That's what Dee Dee wanted. So if that's what you guys want to believe she is, you're, you're basically doing what Dee Dee wanted. That's probably not what Gypsy wants. She's a 32 year old woman that just got out of prison. She's not like a little tiny baby. I've narrowed this down to my top three Gypsy Rose public misconceptions that really annoyed me this week. We're gonna watch the interviews, okay? I have a couple things that really got me heated. And I wanna remind you, some, some of these things you guys may not have seen if you weren't on Twitter and TikTok and whatnot, but let me tell you what was going on if you didn't. This one was absolutely insane. I saw quite a few comments where under Gypsy Rose edits, I can't believe I'm saying this, the year is 2024 and there's Gypsy Rose Blanchard's edits. There were people under the comments that were saying the phrase, this makes me sick. They were saying, the bitch is dead. Let me explain. After the murders, Nicholas Godijohn and Gypsy Rose Blanchard went on to Gypsy and Dee Dee's shared Facebook account and they posted a couple of disturbing Facebook statuses. One of the Facebook statuses said, the bitch is dead. And this is also what alerted other people that something might be going on. Fast forward to the trial. One of the attorneys was asking Gypsy Rose verbatim what happened. And this is in a period where Gypsy is taking ownership for everything that happened. Even though there's a sense of her feeling ashamed, Gypsy is not happy that she killed her mother. She said she did it almost in a, a sense of self-defense. She's not proud of this. But when asked in court and when taking ownership of things, the attorney asked her, what did the Facebook status say? And Gypsy Rose Blanchard bluntly says, the bitch is dead, into the microphone. So then on TikTok, people went and took this clip out of context as though Gypsy was celebrating her mother's death and saying, the bitch is dead. This is now in my internet history. Please be thankful. This like drove me absolutely fucking nuts. And then these little TikTok people that like aren't familiar with the case and didn't understand the con, like the context of it. They were saying the bitch is dead as like a celebratory, like almost like my shoulders are rising. <laughs> they were saying it as almost like a, a fan phrase as though this was a way to support Gypsy. I want to remind you and you will see in the interviews the Gypsy has said several times she wished things had happened differently. She's not proud that she killed her mom. But then you guys are over here saying the bitch is dead. You gotta be kidding me. That's the first one. <laughs> That's just the first one. I wanna reiterate. I know that to an extent you guys are joking and trying to find a little playfulness and, and bliss and a glimmer of light when 
things just suck sometimes. I'm trying to remember that. There was a lot of people saying, um, when Gypsy gets out, I want to play her this song. Or, ooh, when Gypsy gets out, I can't wait to show her this. What do you think of this? And there's also a playlist called Songs I Would Play for Gypsy Rose Blanchard Now That She's Free. Make sure I check it to 10. I personally think this is really odd and it's like self-serving in a way. It's just funny or it's for fun and I kind of see what you're saying, but it's going back to that thing of you seeing Gypsy as a little innocent baby and you are the shepherd that's here to guide her. It's such a small statement and I get that it's kind of a joke. Is it really a small statement? I feel like it's saying a lot. It's saying a lot about what you think of Gypsy and like what you think you are. That's just how it's coming off to me. I think it's just so ironic that Dee Dee wanted Gypsy to look and act like a little baby and people are treating her like a little baby. I'm like grinding my gears there, but I keep trying to take it as they're joking. Do you ever get so like overwhelmed with something? You just feel it in your body and you got to move around a little bit. Makes me a little uncomfortable. The third one I have, and I think this one might be a little controversial because I see where you guys are coming from sometimes from a place of care and concern and your intuition. There's a lot of people that came out, especially early on, and they were looking at Gypsy Rose's husband, who, okay, he wrote her in prison. It's giving hybristophiliac. It's a little, you know, uh, okay, okay, I hear you. I see what you mean by that. But people actively commenting, like, on videos of her with her husband or, like, trying to, like, do, I don't know, Twitter threads on him or something, just saying, like, I don't trust that guy. Gypsy, that guy's not safe. Gypsy, that guy's a red flag. Who are you? Like, what is the point of that? Like, I get it if you're thinking that, but if you're stalking every <laughs> thing, I don't trust this man. We're protective? Got it. Okay, you own her. Okay, there's something really big here. The gypsy now has an opportunity to make her own decisions. She's had the overprotective parent, overprotective everything. If you really want to support her, this is my thought. This is my opinion. I'm not an authority on this shit. I'm of the opinion that gypsy's working right now. She's used to being in the spotlight because when she was younger, her mom constantly thrust her out in the spotlight. She's comfortable talking. She's comfortable like doing this kind of stuff. And right now she's fucking working. She's promoting stuff. She's promoting shows. She's promoting books. She's very clearly PR trained. She's happy to get on social media. She always loved the internet before all of this happened. I think if you want to support her, once again, I reiterate, I think if you want to support her, watch her stuff, buy the book. Maybe leave like a supportive comment, but just don't be weird. <laughs> but outside of what the public thinks Gypsy is or what they want her to be, probably because maybe that's what they need in their life in the moment. Maybe, I don't know. We're gonna get to the interviews in a second. She's been on The View, she's been on Inter Entertainment Tonight, lots of those, but I just wanna put this in here kind of in the beginning. If you didn't know, last night as I'm filming this, Gypsy Rose Blanchard got hacked on TikTok. I don't know about other social media platforms or anything like that. And so literally just a couple of hours ago, she put out this message. I wanna put it at the top of the video just so everyone's aware. So it has come to my attention that there has been a lot of fake accounts in my name. Um, some of them even going as far as to ask for money. I would never ask for money. Please don't make a GoFundMe. Don't do anything oh. with money. My legit accounts will have a verified check mark on it. Whereas these other ones are popping up under my name. Um, and they're, they're not me. I, I only have one Instagram. I only have one TikTok. Um, she sounds so <laughs> frustrated. I would not be surprised if the scammers haven't already racked up thousands of dollars from it. Even people with good intentions, seemingly, there's people that start GoFundMe's and they're like, hey, let's raise a bunch of money for Gypsy Rose Blanchard and then give it to her. I mean, you don't know if they're really giving her the money. And second of all, I don't think Gypsy wants anybody to do that. So reminder, all of her accounts so far really do have a verified check mark on them from Snapchat all the way to TikTok, Instagram, all of that. So you guys be careful. Welcome to the show. 
Nice to have you here. So, um, you were released from prison just a week ago. Yes, that is correct. I mean, that's just, a, you know, like yesterday. Right. You served eight years of a 10-year sentence. Mm -hmm. um, number one, how are you doing? Number two, you say that prison changed you. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Tell us about it. Um, well, I'm doing great. Um, I'm in New York City for the first time. Um, I know I, I'm enjoying my freedom. I'm taking it day by day. Um, it feels really, really nice to be um, out in the free world. How did prison change you? Um, prison, prison actually was actually very um, helpful for me. Um, I, I always say that if I didn't hmm. go to prison, I don't think that I would have acclimated to the outside world as easily as I have now. Um, That's it, interesting. Yeah, it gave, so your it, life was less the world than prison. You said you were I, more dude, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Some people said like, oh, Gypsy should have never gone to prison. She should have gone straight to a mental hospital. But the people that said that, I don't think they've ever been to a mental hospital before. <laughs> I think she's right. They threw her into prison and she was probably with a lot of women that said, oh my God, you've been fucking abused. I'm gonna take care of you. Y'all fucking know. Y'all are here to talk about some playlist. This is what I'm gonna show Gypsy. Y'all would be that person in prison. They would take her under your wing, protect her and show her stuff. So over eight years, she probably did really learn a lot in jail. Yes, the, the prison mindset. mothers. But um, Gypsy Rose, you suffered for years as a victim of uh, Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Your mother, Dee Dee, tricked everyone doctors, your family, the community, into believing you were chronically ill when in fact you were perfectly healthy. Right. Uh, she claimed you had leukemia, muscular dystrophy, forced you to shave your head, mm -hmm. use a wheelchair, insert a feeding tube. Yeah. What was your mindset oh my God. under your mother's control? Um, you know, my mindset was very, um, very submissive. I always wanted to please my mom. Um, I, I grew up as a people pleaser, and that's something that I've actually worked really hard to change over the last couple of years. Um, but I just never wanted to risk disappointing her or making her mad. Well, she also toyed with your emotions Very as much she would so. favor yeah. the cat Yes, over yes, you there and... was a lot of manipulation tactics going mm. on. Um, Stop! Did anyone hear that? That is one detail that I had never heard of in the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case. When Gypsy would upset her mother, Dee Dee would ignore Gypsy and start to give all of her love to the family cat. She put her daughter in competition with the cat. I don't. I don't have any commentary on that. I just want. I just want you to take it in. When all a child wants is love, mm -hmm. so playing off your very existence and your instincts, mm -hmm. she manipulated you from the day you were born. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you think she was able? She had a. You had your most painful surgery was when your salivary glands in your neck were removed mm -hmm. because your mom convinced doctors that you were drooling too much. Yes, yes. And in talk fact, about. she had put something on your gums to mm -hmm. numb you, and you were drooling. Mm -hmm. How did she convince doctors to yeah. do these things? Yeah. You know, I, I just don't understand myself, and that's something that is it's going to be hard to understand going forward because I have to live with those things now. I have to live with the scars on my body and look mm. in the mirror and know where that came from. Mm. Um, and so it, it's... It's not only a emotional trauma, but it's a physical trauma. But your mom had an experience as a health professional, right? So she did. She had. She was in nursing school when she was younger. Yes. Does not a doctor make? Nor does she, should she have ever done the thing she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my understanding also is that you lived in Louisiana mm -hmm. and then moved. And mm -hmm. when doctors asked for your medical records, mm -hmm. she said uh, that they were lost in Hurricane Katrina. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, um, and I think you're very brave for being here. Thank Dude, you. Gypsy is handling this stuff like a tank. Bro, if this happened to me, I would be a victim for life. <laughs> I would be a victim for life. And she's over here acting like a grown woman. I, hey, she's different than me. Story, I think it will help a lot of people. Thank you. Um, I'd the be, oh! that, a lot of that would be have, me. I don't have it, <laughs> is this. Why didn't you try telling a family member mm -hmm. or the police maybe that you weren't sick? Why resort to murder? Well, you know, I did try to run away. And, and I also, about this. I want to remind you guys, the hosts are asking some pretty hard hitting questions here. That host clarified, I don't have this question, but I know the people want to know. So she's giving her the floor to answer those tough questions that people have. Um, I talk about the first time that I tried to run away from home within four hours. I got as far as it's outside of town. And within four hours, she brought me back to the home, chained me to the bed, mm. um, left me there for two weeks, mm. two weeks without 
a lot of food, water. I had to urinate on myself or in a bucket Ugh. as she, you know, held the chain. So that makes me feel like um, that's a memory. That's a memory. And it's so brave that she's like talking about that on TV. She said, while my mother chained me to the bed and held the chain, I had to pee in a bucket. That like just sounds like some shit that's burned in her brain, a moment, and it's crazy. I'm so afraid that if I reach out for help another time, what will, it will be worse for me. Yeah. So is that why you didn't say anything to the doctor to when he removed exactly, your salivary Exactly, my, my mother was in the room with me at every single doctor's appointment, uh -huh. every surgery. Yeah. The only time that she was ever not with me was actually in the operating room itself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you, you pleaded guilty in 2016 to second degree murder uh, for conspiring with your then ex-boyfriend, Nick, go to John uh, to kill your mother. Mm -hmm. You were sentenced to 10 years. He was sentenced to life in prison. Right. Um, I love in the documentary, you take, you take responsibility. You talk mm -hmm. about, you know, you, you are doing the time that you were given, um, but he will spend the rest of his life in jail. How, how do you feel about that? How do you kind of reconcile that? Oh. Um, you know, I know that we both probably have a lot of regrets. I know I have regrets. Um, I can't speak for him, so I really nope. don't know his side of things. Um, all I know is- I'll tell you right now, that was a little PR training, but Gypsy's on a PR tour, so she's gotta have some PR training. But she's very well-spoken and they've covered some of these questions before. She's prepared. All I know is, you know, I did my time. He's doing his time. That's a PR answer. Um, <laughs> that's all the best that I could do at this point. Like for me, I have to focus on myself right now. I can't look in the past and worry about him or anything else going on. I have to prioritize myself in this moment. I just got released from prison after eight and a half years and then I didn't have a life before that. So mm -hmm. I have a lot to process and go through right How now. How old are Gypsy? you now, if I may ask? I'm 32 actually, okay. yeah. Bro, um, she's sitting up there like a member of the view. She's very well spoken. <laughs> She was your torture, she was your captor, but she was also your mom. Right. So when you think back on your mom right now, how do you feel about her? And does any part of you miss her, feel Yes, yes, love? yes, of, of course. Like um, at first I was really upset finding out all of these things that she had done to me and just kind of the web that was going on of lies mm -hmm. and uncovering that. I felt very angry at the beginning after my it's arrest. crazy, those um, pictures are crazy. And then after eight and a half years, I've come to realize that she suffered a lot from mental illness. Mm. How do you work through those emotions? How do you work through the- I, I give myself patience. I give myself grace to take Ooh. it day by day. And if I feel angry in one moment, let me feel that. If I feel remorse and, and sorry, um, there was one time on the in, the anniversary of, of the crime is actually the hardest day of the year. Do you have, are you going through psychotherapy? Yes, I am, I am. And so what I do on the anniversary is I play one of her favorite songs mm -hmm. and I allow myself that time to cry. And I mean, ball cry hmm. because I feel like I can't do it in front of She's other allowing people herself I'm to grieve. She's being judged for it. Yeah. I'm probably gonna make some kind of snarky comment like, well, you killed her. Um, but I'm like, you oh. know, she was my mom and I miss her. Even though everything she that she did to me, she was still my mother. I think some people might be really surprised when asked if she misses her mother that she says yes. That woman was her world for 22 years. Even though we very clearly see it as abuse, and it was abuse, Munchausen syndrome by proxy, or I think they call it factitious disorder or something now, to Gypsy in her very core, this is like actually kind of fucked up, but I, I think it's true. In her core, her mother taught her that that is love. This is how someone shows you love. And it's gonna take a really, 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 really long time to find out that like that's not love. And I think that she's like very actively working on this, but I am not surprised that like something deep in her still feels like that's how you love. I'm not surprised by it, you know? Another aspect of this is Gypsy Rose's new husband, who I believe wrote to her in prison about two years ago. And they ultimately decided to tie the knot about a year ago. And now that she's out, they are together. People don't like Ryan. I don't know why. It was like at some point after the paparazzi video where they were, you know, out looking for shoes and Gypsy was kind of down to talk to the cameras and Ryan just wanted to, you know, walk off and get away. And 
Okay, there's one other detail that I thought seemed a little odd in theory. Ryan's license plate, it said Hitman on it. That was his license plate. However, apparently it's a tribute to a wrestling character that goes by the name Hitman. So take that how you will, but that was people's first impression of Ryan and they didn't really like it. But over the past couple of weeks, Gypsy and her boyfriend Ryan have been fighting back against the critics. I also just want to remind you guys too that like Gypsy for 22 years of her life with her mom, they were codependent. They were best friends. They were a unit. It was them against the world. So I would not be surprised if Gypsy replicates this with her new husband. That's how she knows love, being an inseparable unit. That's what Gypsy and her mom were. They had a Facebook page together. When people came down and said, oh, I think Gypsy might be faking it, her mother went in even closer with her, saying, we're a unit. It's us against the world. So it's no surprise when people started to come out against Ryan, Gypsy would come out and make a statement and say, fuck you guys, I love my husband. Because honestly, that's kind of what Gypsy is. She's a writer, you know? But I think this is all going to change over time, like as she has more experiences online and through therapy. But this is just where we're at today. Look at the newlyweds. So cute. And rocking that new ring, too, I, I see know. Gypsy. This was actually his mother's, so... This passed down to me. So yeah, that's it was cool. always meant to go to my wife. So And it fits perfectly. It didn't need to be adjusted at all or anything. Well, I guess it was just meant to be. Meant exactly, to be, right. Exactly. Yeah. You are the one, as you said, on the green. Right. <laughs> so I got to know, though, Gypsy, how many men wrote to you oh. wanting to date you oh. while you were in prison? Oh. Um, a lot. I, I need some numbers. Well, give me an estimate. God, y'all remember the Chris Watts letters? I want to see the Gypsy letters so bad. Come on, oh, hit, her. Oh, oh. hit her with it. Over 250. Over 250? Yeah. From all different countries. From all countries. I think it was more. I think they held back some of those letters. All right, so what about Ryan made him the one? What was different about Ryan? Well, Ryan's from Louisiana. and I mean, he, there's one of a kind. Um, but he's from Louisiana, and I'm originally from Louisiana. So um, I saw that, and I'm kind of like, hey, you know, someone from my home state, we mm -hmm. probably have a lot in common. Okay. So I wrote him a letter back, and... We became friends, and then of course more than friends, mm -hmm. and then- Bro, you know that motherfucker got that letter back, and he said, yes! <laughs> now we're married. <laughs> Incredible, congratulations Thank to you, you both. How many women now have tried to pursue you, Ryan, now that you're with Gypsy? Um, uh -huh. I hadn't even, uh -huh. had even give it any thought. Uh -huh. I mean, look at this beautiful woman I'm sitting next to. But I have a feeling, I? I have a feeling that there's a lot of attraction coming to you from other women out there. Somewhat. because of, There Somewhat. has been a few. And I Dude, this interview was being like, so nice. Mm, oh, oh. <laughs> And I just let her. Wait I'm a like, minute, y'all hear that? There has Somewhat. been a few, and I hit the block button. Oh. I'm like, mm, block. <laughs> and I just let her. I'm like, hey, go for it. Happy wife. Oh. Happy life. That's right. right. So how is it now being a newlywed couple in the real world, outside of prison? We call it a newly together with. Yeah. Uh, you know, because we've been married a year, year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. Right. So it's newly together with. Dude, it, you can tell Gypsy is so happy to be married. I have my husband. Here's my ring. She's loving it. But was the transition difficult? I mean, for a year or so, you guys were married behind bars. Mm -hmm. Now you're newly together. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what, what's that transition been like for the two of you? I mean, maybe what it's been five, six days. Yeah, but so I we're still it, learning each other. Yeah, the transition know? has been pretty but simple been right now. But it's um, like I cleaned out his closet and put my clothes in it, oh. and um, I'm just I had kind a of room already. Don't let her, <laughs> don't let her fool you. <laughs> so like integrating, you know, into our new life together and just settling into married life. We cooked our first dinner together and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's fun. We're we're learning about each other. I've already told them to put this toilet seat down several times. No, and gypsy, <laughs> it'll never end. You it'll will never constantly. End. I I really yeah. like I really like how nice the interviewer is being to her. But also, dude, I was just thinking about this. You know, how, like some people are saying, like I don't like him, I don't trust him, and they're like going out of their way to like drive a wedge between the two of them dating. The biggest way that Gypsy's gonna rehabilitate over time, I think, is by her making her own decisions. She didn't get to make any of her own decisions for 22 years of her life. She had someone telling her what was best for her all the time. And so sometimes you need to hard swing that pendulum back. I mean, even in jail, she had a lot of, you know, boundaries and barriers. Now this is true freedom for the first time in her life. And the last thing she needs is anyone breathing down her back, telling her what to do under the guise of, it's because I care about you. Because trust me, 
she's had enough of that. <laughs> you know, she's never got to live her life before. So it's one of those where, you know, our parents were like, well, let's let her live it. And that's what they did. But understandably so, if you're living your life really for the first time, did you, was there not a part of yourself hmm. that wanted to do it alone, independently? Oh, probably not. Let me, let me just say, us codependent <laughs> bitches, I love being codependent. Okay, I'll just, I'm fine. You know what? I did several years where I was like very single. I like, I'm just naturally a very codependent person from like my upbringing personally. But then I had a really, really bad, like abusive relationship. And then I was like, I'm done with everybody for like a very long time. And I was single. I was single for three years and I was crazy. <laughs> I like having a partner that I'm not like always fighting with or at odds. I like us being stable together. Unfortunately, it was just the environment that I grew up in being more codependent and I found a way to make it work for me. So I get it. If she's like, I gotta be around somebody, you know, I gotta always have somebody. I get it, bro. I'm like hyper independent, but also enjoy like co like being with my partner. Like we are always doing our own things, but then we come together a lot and hang out. I think it's like so healthy, but I don't like being entirely alone. Cause I, then I just feel, I just honestly feel like I was flying off the handle when I was entirely alone. I do, I don't know. I think that spending eight and a half years in prison, all I was was alone. Oh, oh. And I was tired of sleeping in a bed by myself. Okay. I was tired of feeling okay. like I had no one to share memories with. I always knew that I wanted to share it with someone. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's cool. fair. Even though she's like beautiful, popular, like very famous now, it's actually probably even scarier for her to get into the dating world because she doesn't know what people want from her. Like the spotlight is on her and she's probably gonna have more money and stuff like that soon. Gypsy can't just hop on, you know, hinge and meet somebody. It's gonna be really hard for her to meet people. And that's another thing that can keep you in a relationship, feeling like you don't know how you're gonna meet anybody. We both have talked about starting a family. Mm -hmm. We just don't know when yet. Um, my life is a little hectic right now. Um, so we're just trying to take it day by day. We're just trying to start off the marriage on a good foot before yeah. we- Oh, that is so healthy. Right now. But never say never. Yeah. Mm hmm Ryan, how are you dealing with the newfound fame and being in the spotlight? It's different. I'm a very private person. Uh, oh, yeah, know, he don't like I'm this. I'm a teacher, so it's one of those where I didn't want my school involved or any of my kids, but it, it's, it's been different. I He's knew... got kids? Just for clarity, anybody can enter a relationship later on and have kids, but the red flags were going off for a second if you have kids, leave your kids, and then you start writing to people in prison. <laughs> And then he started doing press tours. Then I'm like, wait a minute. But he meant his students in school. It was just teacher talk. What do you say to the haters that don't think this relationship will pan out? Well, just wait and see. We love proving people wrong. Well, you're already clapping back on uh, social media. Y'all have oh. some spicy things to say to each other. <laughs> well, we're new, man. Like, you know. I mean, the, we're I, married. What's I mean, hard for me is watching, you know, the negative comments towards him. I can handle negative comments towards me because I don't care. Okay, as you can tell, I'm a gypsy defender. I'm on gypsy's side, but he did not have to say, baby, come and get it. He did not have to say that. I shouldn't have had to read that. I didn't need to see that. I felt personally victimized by this statement. I want to clap back. And that was my, you know, clap back a little bit. I'm gonna come to his defense. He's my man. Yeah. Oh, that's what wives do. All right. I'm still with it, but he didn't have to say that. It's been absolutely just overwhelmingly, you know, touching. Like it that's touches good. your heart to know that I am being welcomed into society like this. Like, yeah. oh. you know, they say roll out the red carpet, but I didn't mean literally. <laughs> <laughs> It's been wonderful. So it's been wonderful. Absolutely. Dude, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was gonna become a celebrity in 2024. Guys, this is how 2024 is starting. One thing that I actually really like is Gypsy is promoting her series. She's promoting her book, her own personal tell-all of her own story. 
But also, she's going out and doing these interviews, and she's letting them ask her some pretty hard-hitting questions. Now, a lot of you guys already know this, but usually before an interview, pre-selected questions are sent over to the PR people. They approve it. They might do a little media training on the topic, especially if it's sensitive. I mean, this is a true crime case, and, you know, everything that's happened to her afterwards. So, yeah, it's a sensitive topic. They're going to review the questions, but then they go in and they do the interview. A lot of times, difficult questions are not approved by PR representatives. They want to keep it light or they don't want to make the actor uncomfortable. I super get that. But in this case, they are letting Gypsy answer some pretty tough questions. And this one I thought was interesting. You could have chosen to quietly re-enter society after your release, but why instead did you decide to do this docu-series, which is clearly going to give you even greater attention after your release from prison? Um, I think the heart of it all is I just want to share my story. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be a voice for the voiceless. I want to come out and just tell people this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm doing this. It's important to me. It's close to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just tackling it. Yes, it is a lot right out of prison, but mm. um, I'm doing it. Dude, she's cost. working. She started telling people that I had she's cancer. She's working. But none of it was true. There was also a lot of emotional and physical abuse. I started to feel like it was either her or me. So my purpose for doing this documentary is really to just shed light on mental health awareness, hmm. um, Munchausen by proxy syndrome. Um, like this is, this is why. That's I interesting. I think it's interesting that she fully accepts that her mother has it because some people that have that abusive bond with a parent like that, they may not want to believe that in a sense. And she's like, yeah, this Munchausen that my mother had. Share with others what I've been through is because- And people do deal with that. If somebody out there is watching this, they can see me and know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Because when I was living with my mother, I felt very alone. Um, I always say that if I had someone um, to tell me, hey, it's safe to talk to someone and tell them that you're struggling, tell them that your home situation is bad, tell them you're being abused, um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have committed my crime. Bro, ah. Uh... It's crazy that a lot of people are dealing with abuse in their home and they don't know that they're being abused. So that's why it's important for me to share my story. Dee Dee Blanchard's death was violent. And that's when I hear her calling my name. Gypsy, help me. Her daughter, Gypsy Blanchard, and her boyfriend are now jailed on first degree murder. I played a part in asking him to commit the murder. Oh, I don't, I don't see all the you, clips. We've seen it's so in the documentary. Many documentaries, so mm -hmm. many TV shows about you. What do you feel like is the biggest misconception about Gypsy Rose? Um, I feel like the biggest misconception about me is that they think that I'm still that little girl oh! that got arrested. I told y'all. I get it. We want people to be innocent because we need a glimmer of light in our lives. I understand. I try. I try to get it. I'm trying. I think they don't realize that there has been a time gap. Yep. Mm -hmm. From you know, it's an eight and a half year time gap. Yep. From when I got arrested to now. And I've grown up, I've matured, I'm a woman, yep. um, I'm married. Like, a lot has changed. Mm. Whereas I think when they watch the previous documentaries and even the act, I think their image of me in their mind is still stuck in that time space. Mm. And they don't allow for any growth because all they see is those images of me living with my mom. Yeah, oh my God. I didn't even realize she said this in the interview. Oh, thank God, because I didn't want to speak for her too much in the intro, but I was feeling a type of way, sweet Lord. Okay, I'm just going to add on to that too. It's also an ego thing. It's one, some people choosing to see Gypsy the way that Dee Dee wanted you to see her, which is fucked up by the way. And two, it's you wanting to be important and on a high, like a, a higher mature, like hierarchy level. It's putting yourself up here and putting Gypsy down here, which is fucking weird. And honestly, some people may not even realize that they're doing it. All they see is those images of me living with my mom. Right. And so I think now that I'm coming out as a woman and sharing my story now, um, I hope they'll see me in a, a more um, grown-up light. 
You can't breathe. Your body strangles you. Five minutes, I could have lost you forever. Is that what you want? Have you or will you watch the act that Ooh. Patricia Arquette, Joey King portray you, your mother? Have you seen it yet? I have not watched the act, no. Do you um, plan on it? I don't plan on watching Ooh. it. Um, I lived. She gracefully said, no thank you. I lived it. I lived um, it. For me, looking for things that weren't correct or that were inaccurate, that's neither here nor there for me. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm doing this docu-series, is to share my truth oh. um, of the actual events that took place. Um, I'm not trying to Hollywood it up. I'm just trying to oh. do, share my story in the truest of lights. And your mother really isolated you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, had you spoken out and told your truth to someone, mm -hmm. Would circumstances have been different, you think? Yeah. I think so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my One of my biggest regrets is not just calling my dad up and telling him what was going on in my life. The first time I tried to run away, she chained me to the bed. And before I knew it, I pulled the trigger. She never wanted me to find love or be happy. That yep. <laughs> We see in this documentary that your family has regrets, mm -hmm. healthcare professionals have regrets. So the one regret you have is that you didn't reach out to your father. Exactly. I have you know, I have many regrets, but the biggest one is Dude, you know what else? Whether Ryan, her husband, is a good guy or not, like just throw it away for a second. Cause we don't know the guy, okay? No matter how much you dig into his shit, like we don't know him, right? The concept of saying, I don't like that guy, I don't trust that guy, I we want or I want Gypsy to stay away from him. It's the same exact behavior that her mom did. Not wanting her to have a partner, not wanting her to be happy, not wanting her to find love, not wanting Gypsy to have a life because without Gypsy, Dee Dee was nothing, right? So that's where it was coming from. But then people that are trying to like say that Gypsy shouldn't be dating Ryan, they're not doing it in the same way that Dee Dee was. However, it's going to feel exactly like that to Gypsy. Have you guys ever been in a relationship before and your significant other does something and it's very similar to something a parent used to do to you and they mean it differently and it's a totally different situation, but it gives you all those same feelings of something that happened to you when you were younger. Every time somebody comments and says that Ryan's a bad guy or Ryan's no good for her, she's literally going to get triggered in the same exact way that her mom not wanting her to be with somebody triggered her even though some of you guys have good intentions it's like I, I i feel like it's one of the worst things that you can like do to her it's just gonna make her feel that way again i have many regrets but the biggest one is that i didn't call my dad and oh, just express dude. how much i needed his help now looking back on it i wish that i stood up for myself god I wish she had called her dad because the storyline of the dad coming through and exposing Dee Dee's lies, that also would have been crazy. There was a lot of emotional abuse attached with the medical abuse. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how far back she was doing this to me. How did that present time allow you to grow? Because mm -hmm. at one point in the series, you said something along the lines of, you don't think you would have been prepared to live a life on your own or have complete right. freedom. Right. So pres prison, in a sense, was uh, the time for you to experience growth. Mm -hmm. So how did that help you? It, you know, I, I always say that life is what you make it. Mm -hmm. And so I took the a, a complicated situation. I took a situation that I had no control over and I turned it into a positive. So I worked for eight and a half years to take classes, get my GED, better myself as a person. You're, you're now famous status on the gram, you know? I, 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 I don't even comprehend it at this point really? because for me, I'm just another face in the crowd. Also, so I want to remind you guys, the more that you put Gypsy on a pedestal, idealize her, infantilize her, the more her getting justice and fame feels good to you right? It totally makes sense. But as a reminder, if anything bad happens, suddenly it's going to flip and everything is going to feel really, really, really bad because you've channeled this idea into something because it made you feel good in the moment. But when something bad happens, it's going to feel really, really bad. So let the story be what it is. So when I came out of prison, I didn't expect this 
giant wave of social media. You know, I'm posting selfies just like the next person would or the next yeah. person, not thinking anything of it. And before I know it, it has two million views. I'm just like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you've got it's, six million it's, followers it's an and counting. I'd say so. So, what was your reaction? I mean, it was just like mind blowing for you, mm -hmm. huh? It's it's an adjustment. Like I I didn't have social media for the longest time, so. You know, I'm having fun with the selfies and the Snapchats and all of this. Girl, kind you're of on stuff. everything. You're on Instagram. <laughs> I'm on Instagram, you're... TikTok, Twitter. I'm on everything. You know? I also really like that the interviewer is like treating her like they're both the same maturity. That she's like a girl's girl. I really like that. I. Dude, I wonder if that's the energy she got in prison. Gypsy is just getting on socials. She's promoting all of her stuff. Everything's going good. But I don't know. Anything can happen in the next couple of months. It, it's the internet. And now she is a part of the internet.